course I'm muted. But anyway, um, yeah, looks like the stream is on. Looks like looks like we're not having the problems of yesterday. Let's see. That's good. Okay, hear myself. All right. So um, let's go over a few uh, basic details, and then we'll uh, and we'll get into things. So yeah, let's let's pull up project um, project two. Go. So, yeah, I mean, was I lying? I don't think I was lying. Um, you know, I told the truth uh, for whatever that for the whatever that's worth. So, um, yeah. So as I said, I want you to basically begin on the AVL tree implementation as early as possible. Um, so there's something I wanted to say about the, the way that uh, the, the AVL tree is going to have to be implemented. So let's look at wordtree.cpp and wordtree.h. So you'll notice here, let me just zoom in on this stuff. Um, like if you look at this class here, right? What you're going to notice is that there's no parent, right? And you know how I was basically in the implementation that I was doing, the sample implementation, I basically always used a parent node. Um, you know, I had a parent pointer in order to um, handle uh, insertion, rotation, that kind of stuff. Because sometimes what you had to do was when you have a node here and you want to rotate it up, you have to tell the parent of that node that you're going to update um, that you're going to update the parent. So, uh, and you notice that, that that isn't here, right? So, uh, the question is how how are you going to do this? And so you look at the uh, implementation here, and you see that they're doing something a little differently than how I was doing it. So notice they have this helper function called uh, insert. Now they have a different insert, um, which is the actual insert, and then they have this insert helper, which is uh, for you know helping to insert. So look at this thing here. What is this, right? So this is a node pointer reference. So so basically, what this allows you to do is if you change the node that you're currently operating on in the function, it actually updates that node's pointer. Uh, so you don't have to basically go, you know, parent.left equals this thing or parent.right uh, equals something. Um, so you actually don't have to update the parent node because you're going to be passing all these pointer references. The only danger about that is that you have to remember that like anything you do to these pointers, like if you set it to null pointer at the end of a function or something, uh, then you're just going to have nulled out your entire tree, um, things like that. So basically, uh, this is how they're getting around using parents. It's, it's not a bad solution, but the other thing is that what it requires is that as you insert, um, you're going to have to return whatever the new um, the new root is of that subtree as you go up. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of what you're gonna have to do with this thing. And um, yeah. So and that and you're also gonna have to do that here because you notice that unlike here where they have these node pointer references, here they <laughs> here there's a little bit of trickery because they're these are not node pointer references. So you're gonna this this place uh, you can't modify a node, so you're going to have to return the new node. Here, you're going to have to set it in insert, and then it'll change. So it's 
it's going to take a little bit of work, and I might show you um, a little bit of an example if we do any uh, red-black implementation. Um, yeah. So I would definitely start with the uh, AVL tree, which is this word tree thing. I wouldn't even mess with the um, with the B nodes or the book tree until you finished with the word tree and tested it out. And the reason is because if you don't have the word tree implemented, then uh, none of the words can actually from this like giant data file can actually go into the tree. And I don't know if it's the same for you, but basically here um, I have a bunch of like crap characters in mine. Uh, I think I opened it up in Linux as well, so there's all kinds of crap characters that you have to strip out. Um, so the one simplification that I'm going to suggest to the project is something that I just I was writing up last night. Um, basically, the simplification that I'm going to advocate for is um, is this. So let's look at at the project description. So the project description basically comes in three parts, right? You're supposed to write a APL tree and display tree uh, rebalance recursion. And you also have to practice string manipulation using C++ STL. Um, if I can, and I've written, I, I've written it up, I haven't 100% tested it, so I'll send it to the course chair as soon as it's tested and we'll see if we can distribute it. Um, I wrote basically kind of like, you know how in Python you have, um, you have like split and you have strip, um, right? And wouldn't it be nice to have those functions? Uh, so for instance, you could just call uh, on this on this blob of text, right? You could just call, you know, blob text dot split on this symbol. And then in each book, you could call uh, split on this symbol. And then the first thing would be the author, uh, I mean, the, the title, then the author, and then the text, and then I have a strip of garbage characters, and I have a two lower. And I mean, I know that, so, you know, you might almost all be thinking like, oh, I can write those. Um, what I, my goal is, and like a two, uh, basically strip non-alpha uh, uh, numeric. And I also have a, like a two lower function. And I mean, I, I assume that most of you can write this pretty easily. Um, and I assume that most of you can write this pretty easily. And maybe this one will take a little more work. But not impossible. Um, but I think my true goal in writing these functions and putting them into the project is that if they're accepted, if, if the course chair says okay, then everybody's going to at least have the same, um, basically what split is going to return to you is like a vector um, of strings. And so what you can do is just kind of like pump those strings directly into your tree and you don't have to, and like what you won't have to worry about anymore. So if this works, uh, you won't have to worry about um, Basically, string parsing uh, quite as much. And at least if we test this thing out and we're like 100% sure that my, my code works, then at least what we'll know is that everybody, my real goal here is that everybody um, will get like the exact um, same results. for any uh, data, like data block, right? And so, because the real problem is like, if, if we get different results, if you implement your algorithm like to lower just very slightly different, or maybe you have a mistake in it, or if you have a mistake in your strip alphanumeric, or if you miss an, uh, like something in the split method, any one, any small bug here, is just going to completely eradicate your project, and it's going to be hard to tell, you know, if we test out uh, large data files. It's like, 
you know, here's the data file, um, and then we have to do some parsing, and then it has to go into your book tree, and then that has to do some, like, rebalancing, right? So that has to do some rebalancing, and then that goes into a word tree, and that has to do some rebalancing, right? This is the ABL tree, and this is the splay tree. And so, you know, you're going to be thinking, like, if something goes wrong in this sequence of things, right, uh, especially if it goes wrong in the first step, then it's going to screw up everything else after that. So my goal is kind of just to eliminate any potential mistakes in this first step so that at least what we're really judging you on is, um, you know, the strength of your splay tree versus ABL tree versus, you know, just being able to implement a binary search tree, right? Like, if the mistake is in here, in this parsing step, then we're never going to see anything. Uh, did they give a... Really? I don't think so. At least not the version that I saw. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they maybe they threw that in. Um, let's look. Booktree.cpp. Uh, I think where where should it be? Um, Wordtree.cpp. So. Uh, Did they add this? Well, they give you the, okay, so they give you the in order now. Well, that's not bad. Um, hmm. Okay, so it's not in here. Let's see. In order help, no. Oh, this is new. Never mind then. Oh, this is new. I was not informed about this. Okay. Yeah, this is all new to me. Um, it must have been added in the past, like, 48 hours, because I, uh, I hadn't seen this. Huh. Well, guess what? Okay, it looks like, uh, it looks like they're doing it for you to some extent. Just make sure that this code actually splits everything in the way that we expect. Does it, let's see, uh, read the entire data file at once, and then what is it going to do? Okay, so that's good. Uh, oh god. Oh, this is a terrible, wow. Okay, I mean, I guess you can do it this way. This is rather terrifying, isn't it? I haven't even looked at this thing. Well, okay, I'm glad that I spent 15 minutes talking about it because uh, it looks like they gave it to you, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, you're gonna have to test this function out and see exactly what it's doing. I mean, clearly, hopefully it's doing the thing it says it's doing. Um, okay, yeah, this is, this is new. Um, I think, I guess they took my advice, right? without me even having to offer it, because clearly maybe they realize that um, if everybody's writing their own string parsing function, then we are going to end up with absolute chaos in, in the testing uh, part of the project. All right, well, let's get, uh, instead of talking any more about that, then let's just get on to um, other things then. So, okay, I guess I can take that back. So a lot of the functions that you're going to have to implement are basically calling functions from other uh, classes. So for a lot of the stuff in the, in the um, uh, book tree class, it's basically like you're going to be finding a, a book title and you're going to basically be calling its... Um, like find word frequency or search count method um, inside of the other tree. So most of these things are going to be pretty easy to implement. I think the only real thing that is like difficult to implement here is going to be the insertion 
Um, so insert is going to be definitely something that is going to take a long time. Um, and then here, basically, this is going to take all your time here. Uh, when you get to word tree, uh, dealing with insert, uh, the great news is that you don't have to do deletion. Um, so you don't have to do anything with finding predecessors or successors. You don't have to, um, basically you don't have to do anything with that. You're only ever inserting, which is great. Um, so yeah, the, as it turns out, so basically the word tree here um, is the AVL tree and the book tree is the splay tree. So basically it's a splay tree of uh, AVL tree. So in every node of the splay tree, there's an AVL tree. And this is what the, this is what the AVL tree is going to look like. Um, and the other uh, feature about the AVL tree is that uh, you're going to be counting frequencies in there too. So for instance, if Apple occurs more than once, you'll put Apple 2. So it's like here it's a frequency and then it's like, right, the word followed by the frequency of the word followed by the height of the node. So um, basically the, the first colon gives you the frequency of the number of times that apples occurred in that book or whatever. Yeah, you're going to have a tree of trees, which is why I'm telling you to in implement the AVL tree first and just test that out until that's like 100% right. Um, don't even start on the splay tree until you're like 100% sure on the AVL tree. Um, and just because um, if you work on both at the same time and you end up with a problem in one of them, then you're never going to be able to debug because you're going to be like, well, is it is it being caused in the, you know, you're going to have to search through all the output to figure out whether the problem is being caused in the AVL tree or the splay tree. And then you're going to have to debug that one while it's actually working together with the other one. So, um, so yeah, first implement the, the AVL tree, and then do you balance based on the word? Um, the words are the keys, so, well, yes and no, right? So it's an AVL tree. So AVL trees are balanced based on heights. But yeah, the words are the keys. Um, Oh yeah, and here's my little bit of code that I gave you to test the AVL tree, right? Um, I mean, this is this is just the simplest little bit of code that I wrote just to make sure that that you're working on the AVL tree driver first. Um, hopefully, that's a big hint there. Um, yeah, so this is being balanced based on, on the, the heights, right? So here you look at this and you're like, is this an AVL tree? And you say, well, Apple is at height one because, or I'm, I'm sorry, height two because um, it has a height zero node here and a height one node here. And this one has height one and height one. So this is height two. And then this is height uh, two and height two. So this has height three. So this is a this is a balanced AVL tree, right? Um, the only reason why it's not a perfect tree is because it doesn't have a node coming out here. But um, the point is that you, you know, if you have what seven nodes or I guess six nodes here, you can't really make a perfect tree out of this because you don't. You, you're, there's one missing. Um, but yeah. Okay. So ba so the idea here is that if you then inserted another word, let's say you inserted zucchini, right? Um, then you would have a height imbalance here because the height here would be uh, two and the height here would be um, like one, it would be like uh, one, two, and then when you added one, you would get three. And so you'd have to do some kind of, uh, some kind of rotation. I guess this is actually one of those zig conditions where plum would become the root and et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, okay. So that's all I really want to say about the project right now. Um, I'm, I guess I'm not gonna. Wow. 
am I, I'm a little bit afraid of this code. Um, huh. My code is a bit simpler than this. I, I'm, I, it's hard to read through this thing. Um, That's not right. Um, I mean, this is the code that I was writing here, which I guess you don't have to write anymore. Basically, this was just converting things to lowercase, right? If it's an uppercase letter, add 32, which pushes it into lowercase. If it's an uppercase or a lowercase or a number, I guess. I don't think we're supposed to strip out numbers, but I'm not sure. If they said alphanumeric, it could, they could just mean alphabetic, in which case I'd have to get rid of this part here. Um, anyway, so this is like a nice little simple function that just kind of reads to the string and does it. And then here's, here's my version of split. Um, it just kind of scans to the string and, and kind of does it, and then this just pushes back the last element. But use their functions for now. Um, even though we don't completely necessarily understand what those functions are doing. Um, you know, so, I, yeah. Anyway. Oh, and by the way, if, um, if this function isn't exactly doing that, then you should feel free to kind of try to implement the same functions that I did. Um, I think you're allowed to implement new functions, right, in, in these classes. So you notice here, your public uh, member functions start here, your private member functions start here. So actually, um, I did add a few things um, to this. Uh, I added like one or two things to the word tree class and to the book tree class. So. You, you can feel free. I think it was basically designed to be complete, but I think there's like one or two things that you kind of want. Um, so you might add, add functions. If you add functions, remember submit your .h file and your .cpp file, right? Because if we have to, if you don't submit your .h file, we might end up using the default one, and if it doesn't have your function, then it just won't compile. So that's a problem. Okay, so that's, that's enough about that. All right, so now let's talk about the thing we're actually supposed to talk about today, which in, in a way is a lot less important, um, you know, but uh, whatever. Now that, now that the project's out and you know that you're not going to be implementing a red-black tree, uh, talking about red black trees might seem a little bit pointless, but um, I'll try to make it kind of useful. Um, so let me just pull up the list of rules to be a red black tree so that I don't say anything too stupid. Okay. All right, so basically, here's the idea of red black trees. Um, there are five rules, and here are the rules. Let me pull the rules down. One. Every node is either uh, red or black. Cool. Two. Uh, the root is black. Um, three, every leaf, or every nil, right, is black. So I, I, I actually don't want to say every leaf because I'm going to kind of make a simplification where we kind of ignore this rule. Like this rule here um, is not 100% necessary um, as long as, well, 
as long as you understand that every null pointer is a like virtual black node, then that's okay. Um, anyway, I'll get more into that in just a second. And then four, this is the most important rule. This is, this is the rule that makes everything work. Um, if a node is red, like if a node is red, uh, then its children uh, must be black. And so this is, this is the property that creates the height balancing because what we're going to do, and actually it's not, it's not one of the standard rules in a red-black tree in the, that they usually write down, but there's like a secret rule which is you always insert as red. And so whenever you insert a red node, um, then the idea here is that because you're eventually going to make a red node a red child, then you're going to have to do some kind of fixing process, and that fixing process is going to rebalance the tree. So for each node, all simple paths to the descendant nodes contain the same number of black nodes. So basically, what this is saying, um, all paths uh, to leaves contains the same number of black nodes. And so let me explain what that, um, basically what that means is that something called the black height, which I'll, I'll usually just abbreviate as BH, is well defined. And then we're going to see problems with uh, black height. and the whole point of insertion is going to be to fix, uh, it's going to be to fix this property and to fix this property. And then of course, technically we're going to also fix this property, but uh, the root can, you know, the only problem with the root being red in a red black tree. So let's, let's go through these properties and just talk about them a little bit. So why do we want the root to be black? And the answer is because uh, the way it inter interacts with property, um, property whatever, property two and four, right? Because uh, property two is saying that the root is black and property four is saying if a node is red, then its children must be black. So if you have a red node here as the root, then what you see is that the first insertion that happens would create a red, red violation, right? So this this, I, I don't know that there's like an official term for it, but I'll call this a, a red, red violation. Or basically, you know, there's a red baby with a red mama. Right, so that's not allowed. Um, and so the problem is that there's, unless you're willing to change the color of the root to black or do something else, there's not a lot you can do to fix it. I guess technically you could recolor this node black, um, but the good news is that if you start with the root as black, then you can just insert a red node, and this is not a problem, right? This is okay, because if the root is black, then it can have, um, it can have a red baby. And so sometimes what you're gonna see in red black trees is they will draw out the nil nodes. So I'm gonna draw them out as little boxes. And so each one of these boxes is actually like a null pointer. Or sometimes, what you'll even see, like for instance, uh, when you take 441, uh, when you read the, the big book by Corman, um, you're gonna see that there actually is like some universal t.nil object. Uh, that, that he assigns, there's like a, a node that he assigns that's, that basically t.nil uh, has, you know, dot color is equal to black. So basically the idea is that um, each one of these is a pointer to this t.nil object rather than being just a null pointer. But honestly, you can do it either way. The only, the only distinction is that if you ever find a null pointer, you just have to assume it's black. It's actually not that big of a distinction. Um, okay, so, okay, so this is generally why we make the root black. It's just kind of a, 
it simplifies the first few insertions and it just makes everything work out a little bit better. So, so that's why the root, um, the root is always black. It's just, basically it's just a simplification. You could, you could relax this condition and I think you would end up with something, I mean, technically, you know, the lawyers would say, this is not a red black tree, right? Because it doesn't follow property two. But you would say it's so close to being a red black tree that it's not really substantively different. Um, and of course, you know, anyway, okay. So property three, every nil, uh, every nil node is black. There's a reason for this. Um, you'll see that reason when we do uh, rotations versus recolorings and stuff. Um, and then if a node is red, then its children must be black. So that that's going to be the the most. Um, this is going to be the problem, the uh, property that gets violated first. And then to fix that, we're going to have to recolor one of them black. And then that's going to violate when we do the recoloring. Um, it's going to violate uh, the black height rule. So let me show you what I mean by the black height rule. The black height rule is basically this. It's that if you have a red black tree, and let's draw a red black tree out. Let me put some red nodes in. Uh, maybe I'll draw these. So let me draw an example red black tree. Here we go. Um, well, yeah, this is not a red black tree because uh, I need some stuff in the middle. Um, so what I want to do is put this and that. And then I want to put some more red nodes here. And then I want to put these two here. And then I can connect everything. So believe it or not, this is a red black tree. Whoops, wait. Well, now it's a ternary tree. Let's get rid of that one. Okay, cool. So now it's a binary red black tree. All right. so. So why is it a binary red black tree? And the answer is because all the black height to, to all the different uh, nil nodes, right? If we drew in the nil nodes, these little boxes, um, which I'm generally not gonna draw in because I think it's gonna add a huge amount of complexity and kind of unnecessary. I'll, I'll just make them little feet, right? These are the little nil nodes. Um, and, it does, and you'll notice that it doesn't matter if you count them or not, right? Because if you count them, then the black height here is one, two, three, right? So BH is equal to three if you use these nil nodes as part of the count. And here the black height is one, well, I'm sorry, one, still one, two, still two, and then three. Uh, and then here it's, you know, it doesn't matter if you go left or right, it's still three. Then here it's one, one, two, two, and then uh, three for these uh, nil nodes, one, uh, one, two, two, and then three, etc. So basically, no matter how you go, no matter which way you go in this tree, uh, the number of black nodes that you count is always three, even though on this direction there's more nodes, right? There's these red nodes in the middle. Um, and on this, this side of the tree, there's no reds. And so you might think that this is a pretty unbalanced tree, but you notice that there's a kind of limiting factor to the uh, level of unbalance that this tree can have, right? Um, there's like a level of, there's a limitation um, on, on the badness, right? And so what is the limitation on the badness? The limitation on the badness is that, you know, you can have between every two black nodes, you can have a red node, right? Uh, no, that is not how to spell nodes. N-O-D-S-E, N-O-D-E-S, you have, okay, hey dog. Uh, you have, at most, one red. And so the idea, but the thing is that you know by rule four, 
uh, you know by rule four that you can't have two, right? So let me show you an example of something that's not an ABL tree. For instance, here, if we have, uh, not a, a red black tree. For instance, here, if we have this, So you'll notice that the black height here is the same uh, in both directions. And here I'm not going to count the mill nodes. You notice the black height here is 2 because you go 1, 2, cool. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Cool. So in every path down to nil nodes, the black height is 2. And you will call these all black height 1s. But this is not a red-black tree, right? Not red-black. And the reason why it's not red-black is because it violates the double red policy. This is, this is like a red-red violation again, right? Red squared violation. Okay, do you have any questions about how the rules are working together? Like it, if something is or isn't a red-black tree, um, that kind of thing. Like uh, what are your feelings? Is this making any sense? Because I've just talked to myself for about 15 minutes. You mean here? Like, why is it okay that this is the way it is? Um, well, as it turns out, because red-black rules only say that if you're red, you uh, can't have red children. So that means one of two things. That means either they're either the children are black or the children are null. Now you might say, well, but you you already said that null children are already black. Yes, okay, so. I agree with you there, um, but I, I'm distinguishing the two cases just because I think it's it's good to think about the two different cases of when you actually have a node sitting there in the tree versus when you don't actually have a node sitting in there in the tree. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, but there's no rule. So it just says if you're red, you can't have red children. There's no rule that says if you're black, then you can't have black children. So. Um, that rule doesn't exist. So it only exists for one of the two colors. And so that's um, basically uh, the way that we enforce balance. And so let me, let me explain how this enforces balance. So generally what this does to enforce balance is that, um, so generally uh, the rule is, is that you always insert as red. And so you see what you're doing is you're tempting the tree to have a violation, right? Because for instance, if I have a red black tree, and this is a perfectly fine red black tree right here, and then I insert a node, let's say uh, I have 10, 5, 15, and let's say I insert the node 20, I'm going to insert it as a red node, so it goes in and so if your first question is, how do I insert into a red-black tree? The answer is, well, how do you insert into an AVL tree? How do you insert into a splay tree? You always do the same downward insertion method, right? It's always the same. Um, yes, you only count. So that's why I'm always saying, I'm not saying height anymore. I'm always saying black height, right? Because for instance here, let's, let's insert this 20 node here. When you go down, down, and you insert 20 here, and then of course you have to count the black heights of all these nodes, you would say, okay, the black height of this node is 1, the black height of this node is 1, and the black height of this is 2, right? And the reason why it's 2 is because it doesn't matter if I go this way, the black height has to be the same for both of the children. And there's no violation, right? There's no violation here. And there's a reason why there's no violation, because remember, black nodes can have red children. So this is OK. This is not a red-red violation. But now if we tried to insert 
let's say now we try to insert 25, right? And remember, we're already, always, always inserting as red. So what we're going to do is we're going to push the thing in, and then we're going to have to put this red node here. Now, you don't necessarily know exactly what the proper way to do this is, but um, here's, here's my hint to you, right? Like, you might say, well, I don't know exactly how to rebalance this. I don't know exactly what's going on here. But we do know one thing is that this is a red-red violation, right? So now, this here, this was a red-black tree. Here, this is no longer a red-black tree. There's some kind of violation that we have to fix. And you notice that as the, um, the size of the tree, or as the unbalance got worse, right, because we had a red node and then we added a red child to the red node, now we have some kind of issue. So the question is, what do we do to fix this issue? And so the answer is that, remember, there's only two things you ever do, right, in any kind of rebalancing algorithm. You either rotate something left or you rotate something right, and that's it, right? And now you can do two operations if it's a zigzag. You can rotate left and then right. But those are the only two things you ever do. So let's just, for you know, uh, our own amusement, see what happens if we rotate 20 up. So basically, we're going to call this a rotation uh, left on, say, 20, or maybe a rotation left on 15, depending on how you talk about it. But basically, I'll call this a rotation left on 20, where 20 comes up to be the parent, and 15 goes down. So let's see what happens, right? So 10, this side of the tree is unaffected, we get a 5, um, and then we have a red node. We have 20 sitting here, then we have 25 sitting here, and we have 15 sitting here. And you say to me, okay, I mean, you've rebalanced the tree, I agree, right? This, this is definitely more balanced, right? But this is not red-black, right, anymore, because we have red-red violation and we have a black height violation, right? So we have two problems with this thing. Yeah, so, so we still have some issues. But, you know, can we solve these issues by actually just doing one recoloring? Because here the black height is 1, the black height here is 1, the black height here is 0. So unfortunately, this red node here doesn't have a black height, right? Because the thing is, it's, we don't define the max plus one as the black height. We define it as literally both nodes black height plus one if it's black, or both nodes black height plus zero if it's red. And the problem is that these are not equal. So there's no, so there's no black height here, and therefore there would not be a black height here because it would be either here would be one or zero, and then here it would be 2 or 1, right? And so because it, there's two possible values for the thing, we just say that there's not a well-defined black height for that node. On the other hand, right, what if what if we recolor this guy or girl or, you know, fluffy, fluffy bunny node, whatever. So what if we recolor this node black? Did that fix our problems? Hmm. Well, that promoted the black height of this node to 1. That gets rid of the indeterminacy here. So the black height here is, I'm sorry, I was about to write 2. Uh, the black height here is still 1, right? Because this is a red node, so it doesn't add to the count. And then the indeterminacy goes away here because the black height here was 1, the black height here is 1, and they agree now. So now we can say the black height here is 2. OK? Yeah, I think it works, right? I think it works. So as it turns out, that is actually what you do to fix the problem. Um, that, is, that is one of the official ways that you fix, fix this kind of insertion problem. And I'll go through all the cases in, in a minute, but uh, yeah. Well, no, so, so you notice what we had to do.
first you had to perform a rotation, and then you had to change the color. But yes, um, basically yes. So, all right, all right, cool. Let's do another example, right? I'm doing this by example rather than listing out all the rules first. So you might think to yourself, like, I'm not sure what to do in any particular case. By the end of today's class, I will definitely make sure that you understand what to do in each case. But right now, let's just let's just do another example. So let's say let's do the simplest example. Let's say we're inserting a new node as as the as the uh, root, right? So this is a new tree. Remember, we always insert as red. So I'm going to insert 20 as the new root. So now this is the root, but it's red. How do I fix this one, right? This is a pretty easy one to fix. So we always insert as red, but what if that node that we end up inserting becomes the root? What do we do? That's it, right? You just recolor the node to black and you're done. So remember that rule two of the, bio, of the uh, red black tree. So rule two says that the, the root node has to be black. If you ever come across a red root, you just change it, right? And the good news is that if you think about it, a, a black root versus a red root, um, as long as the black heights are the same, right? If the black height is the same here, um, as here, it doesn't it doesn't actually create any imbalance problems in the tree, right? Because um, basically here, if this were a red node, then the black height of the tree would be BH, and you just have a red node up here. When you change this to black, the total tree becomes black height plus one. But these nodes don't change. There's no problems created downstream by just recoloring the thing to black, so you're safe. Okay, so let's do another interesting case. So let me draw a red-black tree. Uh, let's make this node red. Let's give it two black children, I guess, because I feel like it. And then let's... Um, And so let's give these some numbers. So let's say that we have, um, say this is 10, 5, 7, 3, 15, something like that. So now let's insert, just to reduce the number of things, let's insert 20. So 20 is going to go in this tree. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to insert this as usual. Right? Remember that insertion on the way down, as I always say, insertion on the way down is a standard binary search tree insertion. You don't do any recoloring, you don't do any rotations on the way down. Uh, so you just track down until you find the right place to insert and then you stick it on. Only after you're done with that do you ask any questions about, hey, like, is there a problem here? And you're like, oh, red squared. And so so this is an issue. And you might think, okay, well, let's, um, if we try the same trick as we tried last time, well, okay, so actually, uh, I'm sorry, so we can't, this is not quite what we can do. We have to, we have to change this example just a little bit here. Um, let's put in two red nodes. The red nodes are going to be, um, I guess, 13 here, and then let's leave 20 in, and then let's insert 25. Uh, 
So the reason why that was a problem is because here the black heights didn't agree. So this node had to be black. Uh, it couldn't be red. But anyway, when we insert 25 now, we have, we have this issue. So we still have a red squared violation here. Um, the only difference is that it's just occurring one le level down. So how do we resolve this kind of violation, right? Well, we kind of want to do a rotation or a recoloring or something, right? Um, so what we notice is that if we steal this black color from here, right, if we steal this and we push it down here onto the children, then that actually fixes our problem, right? Because if we have, let's say, let me just redraw this with it fixed, um, you'll see that it actually kind of does take care of it. And then let's let's steal the red color. So the red color here becomes so this goes from uh, black to red, and then we push the and then finally here we can have uh, twenty five. And you notice that we're actually able to do that without any rotations, right? So if, you know, so this is great. Um, the only issue that can possibly happen is that if this isn't the root of the tree, if there's like more stuff, then this node could actually be red. Now this node can't be red because this node is black, but just pretend that like it's possible over on this side that this node could be black and these two could be red. So then, um, so then you would see that, uh, that this could be a violation. So the idea here is that We've, we've actually fixed this, the violation at this level without doing any rotations, which is good because it's less work, right? Less pointer manipulation. All we've done is just kind of like pushed the color down so that it's, it's you know, both children are now black and there we go. Um, so, and then this color actually didn't change. And then you noticed here that the black height in, is two in all cases, right? The BH. Uh, is equal to 2, because if you go down this way, it's, you know, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and 1, 2, and then this is, right, so this is 1, 1, 2, 2, right, because when, whenever you hit a red node, you don't count it. So, so this is basically how you would resolve this case, all right? So let's do one more example, and then I'll kind of uh, paste it all together into a single uh, coherent framework. And you'll see that actually all these examples um, come from a single idea or a single question. Let's see here. Um, I want this one to be a black node, and then let's make Let's give this two red children, and then here, uh, what we're going to do is we will make this one it's black, and then we'll have maybe um, Okay, we'll do this, and then we will, let's give these notes some value. So let's say this is 50, 75, 62, 81, 30, 40, and 10, right? So let's try to insert, what should we try to insert? So let's try to insert, uh, 70. <clears throat> so when we insert 70, what we're going to see, right, 70 is going to go in here, 
And so we see a red squared violation. And so this one can actually be fixed by recoloring, right? And so you might ask how I know that, but just uh, so the, the way I know that is you always ask, the, the only question you ever have to ask on red black tree insertion is who is the uncle? And if the answer is, and so what does an uncle mean? Or an aunt, I guess you could also say, an aunt. So if this is our, if this is the new node, right? Then what you do is you look at the parent, right? So here's the parent, here's the grandparent. And so who are your grandparents' other children, right? And those are your aunts and uncles. So this is an aunt or an uncle node. I'll call it an aunt node, an aunt node, or an uncle node. Uh, sometimes you'll see it written as the parent's uh, sibling. And so the rule is as simple as this. If the parent's sibling is red, then you recolor. So if red, and so let me show you what recoloring means. Recoloring means that you paint these two black. So that's what that recoloring means. And then what you're going to do is then you're going to paint this one red. So basically recoloring means that you pull down the color from the grandparent onto the parent and the uncle or aunt. And you know that that's not going to create a problem further down the tree because remember that if, if this thing had any children, it was already a red node. So it's children. This is an argument that we're going to make a lot. Basically, if you ever see a red node in a tree, right, and I say, does this red node have children? You're like, I don't know. But it doesn't matter because I know if it does have children, they're either null or black. So they're not red. That's the big point, is that they're not red. And so it's okay to pull this black color down here because if it had red children, well, it couldn't have had red children, but if, even if it did have red children, you're actually fixing a problem rather than creating a problem. Um, so there's no problem that's created by pulling this color down. <laughs> yeah, I'm not actually, trust me, I, I am not coding not live coding this thing. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not going to do that. The reason why I'm not going to do that is because I think red-black coding is like, for me, it's probably like a two to four hour problem. Will you ever have to code this? The answer is, you have to code the, uh, the AVL tree and you have to code the display tree. And after that, we're going on to heaps and hash tables. So you are never going to have to code this uh, in your life. Um, so, you know, there's, there's something in, you know, called the Eighth Amendment. And it forbids cruel and unusual punishment. And so I think, uh, I think there's been a ruling that says that you can't force people to code red black trees because it's, a, it's a, an Eighth Amendment violation. So anyway, um, so the point is that here, uh, yeah, the, the Constitution of the United States prevents you uh, from being forced to do this. Um, <clears throat> so. Anyway, so, but there is actually a problem that could be created by doing this recoloring. The problem that could be created is that if this node is red, now this node in this particular tree is black. Um, well, so the whole point of the red blackness is basically to prevent, it's, what it is, is let me show you um, the point, right? Well, okay, let me, let me finish what I'm saying about this and then I'll say the point. So if this node is red, 
then um, then we have another red squared violation up here, right? So the point is that whenever you're doing a red black rebalancing, once you do a recoloring operation, you go up to the grandparent and then you call the, the rebalance on the grandparent. So you have to keep like kind of tracing your way back up the tree. If you re if you do a rotation, sometimes you have to call it on the parent, sometimes you have to call it on the grandparent. It's whoever becomes the new node, uh, the root node of the subtree. But if you if you do the recoloring, then you just uh, you just ask like, hey, grandparent, are you now creating a, a red squared violation? And so basically, you have to trace your way back up the tree. So let me ta talk about the point. So what is the point? You know, what is the point? And here's the point, right? The point is that, say you draw a tree like this. And so, you know, you might say like, well, this is, um, you know, let's let's do some. Let's do it up right. So here we go, uh, and then I'm going to try to kind of draw it. Okay, well at least it's better than yesterday. Let's see, so here is that level, here is that level. Um, okay, in order to prevent myself from having to draw uh, a huge number of new nodes, I'm going to erase this level here. And you'll see, you'll see why I had to do that in just a second. So what you notice here is that, what does the black height do, right? The black height here is like one, two, three. So the black height of this whole tree is three. But you see what the black height does for you, right? You might think, well, it's not really limiting the height because you can have all of this extra garbage on one side. But when you think about it, it's actually doing a huge, um, it's doing a huge favor for you. I, sure, I can, I can talk to you about ABL trees. Um, it's doing you a huge favor because what is the maximum possible height? So if the black height is three, what is the maximum possible actual height? of this tree, right? What is the actual max? Right? And you'll notice that you can add, technically you can add some more red nodes here. Like I'm just gonna draw them like this, uh, but let's say I add those red nodes, right? Oops, should be two, but whatever. I, actually, it doesn't really matter. Um, they, there could just be one there. That would be a-okay. And you notice that, like, try to add, try to insert another node into this tree, right? This thing here is a perfect tree, which means that it's every node is of height, whatever, whatever the maximum height is, and every node has, uh, base, every node has basically two children. So that's what a perfect tree is. So this tree is perfect, and so let's say you try to insert another node, and remember you always insert as red, any node you insert here is going to be a red-red violation. So it's going to enforce a fix up here. So that's, so what you see is that the actual max, whatever the black height is, the actual max of the heights is two times the black height. Okay? And so that it performs like a limiting, it, it, it forces the tree uh, to limit its own height, right? The actual height is less than or equal to two times the black height. Now, of course, it's bigger than or equal to the black height, but that's not really the point. The point is that it's less than or equal to two times the black height. So what that does is it, it forces uh, some kind of balance to the tree. Now, it's actually true that um, a red-black tree can be more unbalanced than an AVL tree. AVL trees have actually a stricter rule because you notice that here, if you consider this as an AVL tree and you ignore all the colors 
and you just draw in the heights, you're like, well, one, one, and here's all the ones with height one, height two, height three, height four, height five, and then here you would have height two, and you would look across here and you would say, wow, five minus two is not just like two, right? This is way bigger than one, so this is not an AVL tree at all. Um, and AVL trees enforce more uh, enforce more height balancing requirements. Actually, uh, the advantage of the red black tree is that it actually um, well, there's two advantages of the red black tree. So, what are the advantages of the red black tree? One, um, it actually is going to do fewer uh, fix ups than AVL. AVL is doing a lot of work all the time. Now it's easier to code an AVL tree, but it uh, the AVL tree is going to do few, uh, the the red black tree is going to do fewer uh, fix up operations than the AVL tree. For instance, if I inserted a node over here and I inserted a red node here, all I have to do is insert this red node, stick it on, and then I say, ah, oh, it's a red node with a black parent, so we're good, we're done, right? If I insert another red node here. Red node with a black parent, no problem. We're happy, right? So because we're happy, we don't have to do anything. So actually, uh, basically what, what the red black tree does for you is it, it, it reduces the number of fix-up operations you have to do. Um, of course, the disadvantage is that the, it is way, way more complex, right? Super complex. So... Um, yep, so there's fewer fix-ups in the AVL. I forget what the other advantage was. I was thinking of the other advantage. Um, I think this is the primary advantage, is that there's fewer fix-ups than AVL. If I think of the other, I, was, I just made them up, so I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what the other thing I was thinking of is. I, just, I literally just spaced out on it. Okay. So let's let's go through the actual algorithm for insertion fix up uh, because I think that's kind of the most important thing to do with red black. So basically here's the algorithm. What you do is you check the uncle and then you have two options. Uh, if the uncle is red, the uncle is red, and here if the uncle is black. And so remember that the uncle node is always going to be, let me just draw it in blue so there's no confusion. Um, so basically wherever you are, uh, let's say that you, well, let's say we're in a double red condition. And so, like, this other node over here, right, this is the uncle node. So if the uncle is red, what you do is you recolor. And so what that generally means is you recolor the uncle um, and the parent, who is also red, right? The parent also has to be red because uh, it's a double red violation. If, if the parent isn't red, then there's no violation, we just stop. So you recolor the uncle and the parent, you color them black, and then you recolor the grandparent, right? And then what you do is you set, like if this is the node uh, x, then x is equal to x dot uh, parent dot parent, and then you loop back, and you check the uncle of the grandparent, right? So that's so that's where this algorithm stops. So you set x equal to x dot parent dot parent, and then you refresh. 
So, so this is, I, I think this is the easy case, right? Because generally it, it isn't that bad. But now, if the uncle is black, then basically there's the two uh, rotation cases that you can either end up with. So you can either end up with a uh, basically a zig, a zag, or a zigzag case. So basically, there's either a zig case or a zigzag case, and that's totally dependent on like um, the structure of the tree that you've just kind of looked at. So, uh, for instance, here, if the uncle is black, then what do you do? So um, Let's draw the situation. So your parent is red, which means the grandparent has to be black. And so here, um, and then you are red, and the uncle is black. Right, so uh, let's, let's name these nodes. Let's call this node X. Let's call this node parent. Call this node uncle. We call this no grandparent. So remember what we did in this case. We rotated, right? And so we're always rotating away from the unbalance in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up with this. So we'll rotate. So we'll end up with the parent. Um, we'll end up with the grandparent. We'll end up with the uncle. And then we'll have X here. And so now what do we do? So we don't know if the uncle has red children, so we can't recolor the uncle red. But what we can do is, and remember that here, the black height is going to be greater in this direction than this direction. So, because we've just rotated this down, so what we get to do is we get to increase the black height of this by one. So to do that, what we get to do is we say, uh, let's recolor, the grandparent red, and we'll recolor the parent black and probably X. And so that should that should enforce the rebalancing. So what you're gonna have to do is kind of rotate away from the imbalance and then do that. So now let's do the other case. The other case is where you have the grandparent here, you have the uncle who is uh, black and then you have the parent who has to be red. Remember the parent has to be red because otherwise we wouldn't have a red red violation and then what happens if you have x here? Well if you have x here this is the zigzag case, right? So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to rotate like this first and then we're going to do the other operations. So first what we're going to do is we're going to rotate so that we have this configuration uh, <laughs> here we go X and now parent is down here I'm not going to relabel them right because I want I want you to see what's happening so basically here we're doing a rotation so that and and you see what the distinction is the distinction here is only it's merely that the um, that this is in the uh, like uh, what do you call it? like a zigzag configuration, whereas this is just in a straight line, right? So if this were right right or left left, then it's this. If it's uh, left right or right left, so if it alternates, then this is what you do first. But now what you see is after I do this rotation, what happened, right? This rotation didn't fix the problem, right? We still have a red-red violation. But, hmm, right? Hmm. So what case are we in once we do this rotation? Now we see we're actually just in the zig case, 
So then you just do the zig again. So basically, the zigzag case just reduces us to the zig case, and then we just do that. Okay? And then here, you see that what you're going to end up doing is you don't set x equal to x dot grandparent. You're just going to set x equal to uh, x dot parent, and then you're going to recheck stuff. So, you know, you're going to recheck for for violations and move your way up the tree. So, so this is basically the way the algorithm works. If the uncle is red, you would color and set it to the grandparent and go back. If the uncle is black, then you have to look at the structure, right? You're either in a zig case or a zigzag case. If you're in the zigzag case, you reduce it to the zig case, which you do in one step, so you don't go back and do this twice. You basically just convert it into this case, then you do the next rotation, then you do the recoloring, and then you're back to checking the, uh, you set it to x.parent, and then you go back up one level. And so you see that the good news about all of this stuff is that um, what this enforces here is that you're always moving one level. Every time you do one of these rebalancing operations, you're always moving up the uh, tree either two levels or one level. And so because you're moving up the tree in every level, uh, you know that there's at most O of, like, really it's theta of log n steps that's required um, to get back up. So the insertion takes log on n steps on the way down, and the rebalancing operation takes log n steps on the way up, and then you're back. So this, this enforces a log n uh, insert, deletion, and find. Now, of course, we haven't talked about delete. Delete is a complicated thing that's own, it's, its own thing that we're going to discuss separately. Um, so actually, that's, that's another distinction between AVL and red-black. So with regard to AVL, um, AVL fix-up is the same uh, for insert and delete. But red-black fix-up <clears throat> is not. So there is a insert fix, and there's a, there's a delete fix. So, yeah, that's, that's the distinction between, another distinction would be, and so, you know, if you ask yourself, like, if, if you had a gun to your head and you had to do one of the two things, right, you would obviously pick an AVL tree to implement, because it's like four times easier. as an implementation, right? <clears throat> Red-black is actually a bit lazier in the sense that um, it doesn't do as many operations. So in, in a way, it's probably the optimal thing, right? Because it, it, won't, it won't mess with the tree quite as much. It'll just be like, well, I'll leave the tree until it becomes a little bit more imbalanced, and then I'll run the fix-up operations. The only problem with it is um, something like that. Basically, once you go red, you can't go red. That's the rule. So red can go black, black can go red, but red can't go red. That's the primary rule, right? There's no... This, this is the bad condition. So anyway, yeah, so the idea here is that um, the insert fix-up and the delete fix-up are two separate uh, things, whereas with the ABL tree, they're the same thing. Anyway, I think that's basically all for today. We've covered, uh, we've covered the insertion operation for red black. And actually this is I think this is a pretty good shorthand diagram because you'll see in a lot of books and stuff they're going to write out a lot of stuff that's really complex looking, but actually it all boils down to this. You check the uncle, 
Either the uncle's red or black. If it's red, you recolor. If it's black, you rotate and then recolor. And that's really it. So, um, so yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so next lecture we'll do some red-black deletion. And I want to show you some stuff. I'll, maybe I'll do a little bit of the implementation of a red-black tree uh, using pointer references instead of, um, what you call it, uh, parent pointers. So we'll see if we can do that. I think in red-black you might still need the parent because sometimes you need to access the grandparent from wherever you currently are. Um, anyway. Okay, so that's all for today. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this made some sense, right? Hopefully this made some sense. Um, I guess that's all you can really hope for. All right. See you next time.